Again, welcome everybody to the South Jersey Men's Club. I see a lot of new faces. I'm Philip Godarov. Uh, first, thank you all uh, for coming out, for submitting your, your COVID vaccine cards. I really appreciate that. A quick reminder that, do we still have 50-50s going around? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We've got two sets of 50-50s going around. So if you're interested in that, uh, because there are so many new people, I haven't had a chance to meet everybody. I'm going to ask new members can and I, guests. Can I just say something? Yeah, first? please. Okay. I Rich. Want to, I want to thank everyone for their patience this morning. Uh, um, when I got here at 7.30, nothing was set up. The JCC administration screwed up the whole plans. So I want to thank Juan. Juan's bringing out the coffee, which let's give him a call. Yeah. We got, we got the wrong instructions and everything had to be done at the last minute. That's why we're so congested right here. Usually we're supposed to be here. So I want to thank all the guys who you know who they are. Thank you for helping out this morning. We had to do everything in this past hour. It was a lot of work, but I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Rich. And uh, we really ap appreciate your flexibility and you know finding a spot for everybody because it does look like there is a spot for everybody. So um, new members, please raise your hand. Wow, okay. Let's just sort of start in the front. If you'd like to get up, if you'd like to come up here, you've got a mic. If you just wanna shout, you can shout, but come up and introduce yourself. Sure. Here. I'm Mike Sorfis, and I live in Mark 70. And I've been a Cherry Hill resident for a long time. Here, remember? <laughs> and I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. So, Tell us what you do. I used to be a school principal, and I taught at college, and now I'm retired. Anybody live half a year in Delray? Any, any Florida residents? You're Delray. Delray. <laughs> All right. Got me. Okay. I'm glad to be here. Fabulous, thank you. Here. Rob? I'm sorry that I don't have a comment uh, oh, okay. everyone, but I'm a New Yorker, and when I met Michael, <laughs> he's still upset about the Yankees last night at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, Michael went to Stuyvesant High School, which is like the central high school, where it's very academically uh, competitive. You have to pass all sorts of tests and, and meet all sorts of standards. And, and, and I told Michael that uh, my dream was to be his classmate, but it wasn't going to happen. But uh, anyway, welcome, Michael. And I'm sorry that I haven't met everyone to sit and talk to. I've seen you guys at the picnic, but all welcome, and we're very, very excited to be here. Uh, my name is Rob Levine, and there's a yellow piece of paper, a contact paper, and you have to, the, the three most, the two most important people in this room are Stan Schumas, he's the money man, and Randy Acorsi, he's your IT guy. So those are the numbers there. Okay, thanks for all. Thank you yeah. for coming, and I'm going to give it back to Phil. Yeah. Thank you. And we have a wireless mic, so who's next? The next new member. Good morning. My name is Sid Sevier. I live in Mount Laurel. I'm a federal employee retiree, and I'm glad to be a member of this organization. I read your mission statement, and I like a lot of the good things that you do. Thank you. <laughs>
Fantastic. Do any other new members? Any guests? We've got a guest here. We've got a guest. William? Yes. Hey. Introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. How are you? My name is William Hill. I have been assisting with uh, your website. Uh, my friend here, Mike Burloff, has invited me to breakfast, and I tried to warn him that I eat a lot, but I have never been. <laughs> To do it, so I'm going to have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the uh, We've got. Uh. Yeah, hi, my name is Terry Friedman, and I'm a guest. Ron was nice enough to invite me. Um, we, we live in West Berlin, New Jersey, and I'm originally from North Jersey. And most importantly for me is I retired in February. And. Uh, very much for uh, being welcome here. Thank you. Okay. Nelson Mellet, the new commander. Uh, let me see. I've got your title. New com national commander of the Jewish war veterans. Uh, just going to say a few things. Thank you, Phil. Thank you all for supporting me. I'm the first South Jersey National Commander of the Jewish War Veterans in 127 years. We're the oldest Jewish War Veteran. We're the oldest Veteran Service Organization in the United States. And it's my privilege to represent you. Okay, I want to first of all start out talking about the trip to Israel, which we're doing jointly with the South Jersey Men's Club. There's flyers on the table there. There's flyers out here. This is going to take place in April. It's going to be a fantastic trip. We invite you to be there. I can give you costs, I can give you a lot of breakdowns, but the best thing to do is to go. Sorry. It's the contact <laughs> assistant, yeah, Christy, and she'll give you a lot of great information. In addition to the mission to Israel, which is actually just show Christians for the most part why we support Israel and why they should support Israel. We're going to have what we call the Star Elf portion of it, now it's which is about six days before Thank you for we go to the mission of Israel. And we already have about 15 people going to do this. So we work on a military base, a medical base in Israel, assisting the Israeli Defense Forces. What this does is gives the opportunity for the active duty and the reservist IDF to be with the family. We'll work there. It's not really hard work, but you have to be physically capable of doing that. I'm going to have a brochure completed by the middle of this week, and we'll get it out by email through Randy, through Randy with Phil's permission, get to you. And I know some people in this room already said they have an interest in going. I'm going. And after the mission is real, we're also adding a trip down the Nile. Something that's been asked for by many people. It's going to be fantastic. With that said. You want to talk about flagging? Yeah, now flag. Yeah. One of the main reasons we're standing in front of you, 9-11 is coming up. A lot of non-Jewish people think that Jews are not patriotic. A lot of non-Jewish people think that Jews only serve in the military for the Israeli Defense Force. That's not true. We have over 115,000 troops now in Europe guarding against the Russians. 
least 15,000 of those are Jewish. And adding to that, we have 150 operations, combat operations, for the U.S. military throughout the world. How many Jews are involved? We don't have an exact number. Thousands. Jews do support the U.S. military. With that said, with 9-11 coming up, the plan is, combined with the South Jersey Men's Club and Jewish War Veterans, and we put 3,000 flags representing those people that were killed on 9-11 outside of JCC. On the outside part, we have the gazebo going right, going left, down Springdale, down Crescent. I have the flags, they're the funeral flags we put on the graves of those that have served honorably. I'm going to have them out on the Thursday before 9-11. I'm asking for your assistance to come out starting 9 o'clock in the morning. It's going to take several hours, and may even take several days, depending on who shows up. But I need you out there to support us, putting the flags in the ground. Not a hard task, but then if you have back problems, I recommend you just assist. But then we're going to have those flags out there for at least past 9-11 to show the non-Jewish community, as well as the Jewish community, that's passed by that we're patriots. What do you think of that idea? I don't know if any other community is doing it, and we're going to get the visibility that we want to present to the, especially the non-Jewish people that pass by these busy roads. So Thursday, 9 o'clock in the morning, we'll have the flags out there. We need your help. It takes a while to put up 3,000 flags. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much. What a great idea. And it, oh, everybody. No. Again, you don't have to be a veteran to anybody. You get your kids, your wives, your, your girlfriends, and your wives, but you've got to be careful about that one. Everybody. I don't care who you have out there. As long as they put a flag in the ground. Now, which Thursday? 9-11, the Thursday before 9-11, which is 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. We're starting. Well, on sep on September 8th. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Excellent. Okay, guys. We've got... Sure, well, okay. Rich, would you like to talk about the picnic and how successful it was and how we wish even more people were there? Again, it takes a lot of organization. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out. It was a warm day, but I think we had a good crowd. Everyone enjoyed themselves. Um, I want to thank Don Weisenstein, who's not here. He helped put us together. In fact, we'll be doing fantasy football this afternoon, so we got to get home and get ready for the draft this afternoon at 1 o'clock. Um, we had a lot of spouses and a lot of people there, and we described what our men's club does. Um, not just meeting on Sundays, but all the efforts we've done with Ukraine, with charity, with JCRC, with Federation, with Food Bank. So I think we all had a good time. Um, and I had a good time, and I think the food was pretty good this year. So thank you for coming out. Thank you, Rich. And I'm done. You're done. You raised his hand. Oh, sure. Mike, come on up. We're moving the after breakfast portion to before. <laughs> yes, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see so many new people. And you probably got the gist. You, you, you folks, we have in the room almost everybody retired, but not everybody. We have in the room everything from doctors and lawyers and engineers and retired teachers and salesmen and on and on and on and on. And a lot of people who are in charge of their organizations. Could be on boards, could be executives, could be owners, whatever. And you get to be a point after a while, you'll say, I did my work for 35, 45, 50 years, now it's time for everybody else. What happens when everybody in your room can say that? And that's why we do so many things. A few things that are going to happen soon, let's see, that weren't mentioned, is since the first Gulf War, We've been sending Hanukkah cards to Jewish soldiers all over the world. And that, we call that Operation Maccabee. And in October, we'll be starting to coordinate with some folks in Israel so that we can also be sending them to what's called lone soldiers. Lone soldiers are 
usually from the United States, who, for whatever way it's possible, they become members of the Israeli Defense Force. And there's actually some homes there. And one of the places is the Michael Levin home. Michael Levin was a young man who died in the service of Israel. And his parents live not too far from here in Pennsylvania. And we've arranged that they will be giving out the Hanukkah cards that we give them. In Israel, they'll be giving them out to lone soldiers, and it makes them have a real connection to home. So if you have any Hanukkah cards, like many of us do, you know, in your closets, in the drawers, bring them in, and we'll be able to use them. We coordinate with the Jewish war veterans and many other people. Another thing that we've been doing since the JCC, remember when the JCC was on Route 70? Yes. How many remember that? <laughs> Way back then, we helped them actually put up the sukkah every year. And we'll be doing it again this year. It's a lot easier. We did it pretty much from scratch, but now they have kids. How many people have, in the past, helped put together a sukkah for the JCC? You know what? You don't have to be uh, you know, a star. You don't have to be a real big guy. Everybody here can help. There's a one little thing you can do. That means somebody doing five things is doing six. It's a good way to give back, gentlemen. Let me see if I have one more thing. Oh, yes. What's the thing? Yeah, food we bank. We don't know that exactly. Food bank. Food bank. Thank you. Uh, that paper. Where's the paper? There's also been a food drive that will be. the entire community does. They've been doing it for decades, actually. Where did they get the idea? We used to do it. We had a food drive and we used to find places to give it to. Usually around the high holy days. No, Passover. 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 Okay. Because we used to go to the, uh, the uh, Jewish. You gotta let these guys eat. For right. Sure. Right. This was and the so boost. And we used to load up brandy van. That's right. And we have pictures of that. We used to get so, the Jewish, Jewish Children and Family Service started doing a food drive. They called it the High Holy Days Food Drive. And they've changed it a bit because of the pandemic. They used to fill up this whole room. And then, you know, that building, uh, with the 1721 down the street, the Jewish Federation owns? They did that a couple years. But they've changed it again because of the pandemic. What they're doing is that every synagogue has like an appointed time they can bring donated food to their pantry on Kings Highway and Miami Avenue. And we're going to sign up to help. The two times they're doing it are Wednesday, October 19th and Thursday, October 20th. There's two papers like this. If you think you can help out, put your name on the paper and you'll be contacted. Any questions about that? You don't have to be a gorilla to do this. I mean, sometimes it's very easy work. As far as the food pantry is concerned, as far as the food pantry is concerned, we have as many as, I think the last time we looked, 20 different uh, folks in this room will help. They'll do all kinds of things. Some people drive people to doctor's appointments. Some people will bring food to homes of people who can't manage to come get them. Some people help sort food. When food comes in, we're not going to go into it. But how many people have ever done anything for the Jewish Family Service and the food bank, including putting shelves together? <laughs> Wonderful. You guys are amazing. It's a good way to participate. Look. Nobody can hear me. Any dumbass can write a check. Yes. <laughs> right. What was that? Wow. <laughs> and yes, funding is important. It's a real tiny guy. I can't even begin to tell you the satisfaction you get with hands-on help. Okay? You talk to some other folks in the room. We all know we have here a couple folks who are considered philanthropists. They'll help you. It's a different way of doing it. So much better. In, what can I say? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm going to turn it back over. Oh, I forgot one last thing. So. <laughs> Who are we? We are club number 503 of the International Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. 
and we're part of the Middle Atlantic region of the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. The last thing about it is they have conventions every two years. They've been all over the United States. Next summer, it's in Philadelphia. There'll be a lot more about that. Also, we used to be able to set up awards that we got. We, this little club, this little club not no longer attached to a particular synagogue. We've had more awards than any other men's club in the United States and Canada. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, thank you, Mike. And now, before anybody else gets up to speak, uh, so this is the order. I'd like to do the motzi, have people who might need a little extra time start. Yes. Oh, the trip. What? Another trip. You know, we're we're going to cover we're going to cover everything else after everybody gets food. After food. After food. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the, okay, we're going to do the mozi. Let people who need a little extra time go up and start getting food. Give them a minute. We've got four lines going. We've got coffee up here. Then, after everybody has some food in them, then I'm going to ask Bernie to get up and introduce our speaker. Then we'll finish up with the rest of the announcements. So, would any of the new members like to lead us in mozi? We'll all do it together, but would somebody like to lead us? Anybody? There we go, David. Not, not, not a new member. One of our, one of our, oldies but goodies. I'm saying the mozi. You're saying we're all saying the mozi. All right, guys. Elohim Melech Olam, Hamotzi Lehem Min Haaretz. Amen. I know David Steinberg for about 50 years. He did insurance work for us, and. Fantastic guy, great speaker, he spoke at the VA's but many places, so it'll be a whole rundown of what he's done. And he's a motivating speaker. The speech today is going to be the enemy in the mirror. You know who that's going to be. And uh, he's so charming, and he, I've been with him socially, and it's just amazing, all the knowledge he has. And uh, I've helped him in many things, and over the years, I met some fascinating people. I had a car dealership, truck dealership, at 21 locations, and we dealt with everyone in Philadelphia, the mayors, the governors, and so forth. So I'm trying to set up speakers, even sports people. I have all the sports people I socialize with and know over the years, and they're great. So here's David, all yours. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, first of all, a couple quick little things here. If anybody, for some reason, not able to hear me, please raise your hand and I'll, because uh, I was told when I first started speaking I should hold the microphone as if I'm a rock star. <laughs> Yay! The rock. Eat the mic, eat the mic. That, 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 that's where the rock is. Um, so, uh, one thing Bernie did not say and I wanted to just make a comment on this, if I may, and then get right into what we're going to be doing. In the, in the year in the 2018, I was privileged and honored to be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm probably the only person in this room that has been nominated. I don't know about the rest of the room, but you know, if somebody else had been nominated, I was nominated five times. you were nominated five times. Good for you. How, how, how many times did you win? Well, you, you, you and I have something in common because I won these number of times as well. But to be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, as I said, is a very great honor. I'd like to just uh, discuss some of the story behind this because this gets into what we're going to be talking about here as well. In February of 2014, my sister Anne, Anne Brilliant, some of you may know her from the real estate business, uh, she passed away. It was very, very sad. In the waning moments of her life, I wrote a poem. My, my nephew Harrison uh, called me up and said, Mom's not going to make it through the night. So I waited until my ex-wife and my son were going to be coming home. They're working. Uh, 
and in the waning moments, I read, I wrote a poem for my sister. I'm a poet, by the way. I, sur I started a group called the Society for Poets of Southern New Jersey back in 1980. Right now, it's probably one of the oldest, if not the oldest group, poetry group in the state of New Jersey. So I read the poem at her memorial service over the Platt Chapel. And uh, I'm also a member of the Society for Poets of Southern New Jersey. I started the group of one of the founders in 1980. So, so uh, at that meeting was a young lady who, did, who spoke very, very little English. And I found out her name. Her name is Thalia Hassan. She's from Iraq. So she came to America and uh, she liked the poem. And when she said, she said to me, gee, I'd like to translate that poem into Arabic and put it on a website in, uh, in England. Wow, nobody ever said this to me before. I've, asked people, I've had people say, gee, I like, like the poem, I like a copy of it, but be, have it translated into another language and put it, and put it on a website in a foreign country? My God, that, that was amazing to me, absolutely amazing. Then she came to me again and said, I've got a friend in Holland, likes your poem. Then she came again, friend in Sweden, then Morocco, then Tunisia, then uh, Egypt, then Jordan, and Iraq. And all of a sudden, my poetry spread all over the world. This is amazing. This is truly amazing. And then one day she came to me and she said, uh, I have a friend who would like to like to have your poem, My Enemy in the Mirror, published in a magazine. Well, this is different. And you'll never guess where. To, I'd like you to take a guess where she suggested in the Middle East that my poem was to be published. Anybody want to guess? Nope. Saudi Arabia, nope. Russia, nope. <laughs> nope. Persia, no. The Persia's ancient country. Nope. Who said that? Wait, raise your hand. You got it. It was in the Gaza. She has friends. She's, of course, from Iraq, and she has friends all over the Middle East. And it was published in, uh, in Gaza. And, or, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be published in Gaza. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So, um, a little incident happened to break out. That was the war with Israel. So, it was not published in July of 2014. It was published in December of 2014 when some of the hostilities started going down. And as you know, it goes up and it goes down all the time. And unfortunately, there's a loss of life on both sides that's tragic for all the people there that are affected by that. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to open up and read the poem to you. And if for me, it was a great honor. And I'm going to get my, let me get, put my glasses on here. By the way, um, I see a lot of blue caps here. You notice my cap is not blue. It's red. And it's got a circle in here. And the, and the circle, for those of you who are in the back can't see it, it says United States Marine Corps. Yes, I was, I was among the people that have served. Have you ever heard of a Jewish Marine? You're the first one. Well, it's strange. My, my dad and brother both were in the Marine Corps. And I wanted to. Uh, follow the family tradition, and I uh, figured, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in my, my uh, late teens, early 20s, you know, make, make, make a man out of me. Still waiting. <laughs> my enemy in the mirror. Okay, here we go. My enemy is not who I think he is. My enemy does not hide behind a gun or a bomb. My enemy is not faceless. My enemy has feelings, too. My enemy does not believe differently from me. My enemy does not want to take my land from me. My enemy does not want my wife 
my children to die. My enemy does not want to change my religion. My enemy does not want to harm nor kill me. My enemy wants me to succeed. My enemy wants the best for my family. My enemy wants me to have a happy home. My enemy wants me to live in peace. My enemy is not who I think my enemy is. My enemy is really my fear. My enemy is really my hate. My enemy is really my anger. My enemy is really my disgust. My enemy is whom I see in the mirror, who, where I, who I hate and blame others for my feelings. Until I saw myself in the mirror, I did not know who my enemy really is. Oh my God, you've revealed yourself to me. I have met the enemy, it is really me in disguise. Help me God, help me to vanquish my enemy. What must I do to change my enemy in the mirror? Help me to overcome my fear. Help me to overcome my anger. Help me to learn love from my enemy, from another human being who is just as fearful as I am. My enemy is not who I think my enemy is. Somewhere along the line, an, an editor in Gaza thought this was worthy of being published. I'm greatly honored for that as well. And let me just go on with the story, if I may. The young lady, Falia Hassan, became a very good friend of mine. And Falia and I went around to uh, colleges, libraries, universities. We've been to mosques, we've been to churches, we've been to synagogues. We've been even on a TV program up in New York. And we called ourselves a Muslim woman and a Jewish man reading poetry and hosting a discussion on peace. And for that, I was greatly honored to be considered for the Nobel Peace Prize. Now, the people that won the Peace Prize that year were, were uh, two separate individuals. One was a lady from Syria, a Yazidi lady. Another one was a doctor in Africa. And both of them were were advocating the very same thing, and that's why they shared the award. And that was the use of rape as a weapon of war. They were very much against it. They're very deserving. I'm very proud of them. I'm very happy that I had a great honor that was uh, afforded me for just simply thinking about putting me in the, in the, uh, in the company of greatness. So. Uh, let me ask a let me ask a question here. How is everybody today? Wonderful. Wonderful. Good. Fantastic. Oh, I like that. I like that. Most most groups I go to, somebody who says, "Well, you know, it's good. I'm fine." <laughs> you know, I don't have to tell you. You've heard it all. You've heard it all. Um, um, how come? No one asked me how I am. How are you? I, well, I thought you'd never ask. Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. Arthur Godfrey, right. Aloha. I'm amazing, just like each and every one of you. And I must admit, having never been to this group before, I'm blown away by a lot of the good things that you, you folks are doing. Uh, you deserve a great credit. Uh, and it's... Uh, it, I, I find the wonderful works that you're doing is just, just good because we need to help one another and it doesn't matter who we help as long as we help people because Lord knows this world is not exactly uh, a place of peace. Or is it? Or is it not? Or can it be? We can find peace in an unpeaceful world. That's, that's, what the, uh, that, that's what this is about, finding peace within self. Just like, just like I recited in the poem, we all have the golden opportunity when we look in the mirror, but we don't see our physical self. We don't see our physical self. 
we see our spiritual self because these are the things that make us who we are. Obviously, many people in this room, most people, I would suppose, and even those, of, those members that are not here for today, have a golden opportunity to do the same thing that we're doing. We, we all have to, at some point, look through ourselves, our attitudes, our ideals, the way we live, the, our beliefs, our religion, uh, the way we're brought up, uh, our family, our neighbors, our synagogues, our, uh, we, we all look in the mirror and we all have a golden opportunity to be able to look and see who we really are. Beyond the fear, beyond the anger, beyond the ox, beyond the disappointment, beyond everything else. Essentially, we are all the same inside. We've accomplished different things. Some of you have got nice places in uh, other parts of the country, which is, which is wonderful. You've done very well for yourself, and you should be congratulated for that. Not everybody has done that. But we who have not done that have done other things to be able to re reach out and help people. I'd like to just share a little story with you. We're going to take a little departure here for just a moment, okay? And uh, I've got a couple characters in this story, and I'm going to rename the characters. This is not the original story, as you're going to hear, but renaming the characters. One of the characters is Bernie Schuster. Anybody, anybody here named Bernie Schuster? <laughs> ah, there you are. There you are. Okay. He's a character. Uh, okay. <laughs> as you're going to find out. As you're going to find out. Uh, another one, uh, David Schwartz. Is there a David Schwartz around here? They, oh, okay. There, there you go. Okay. A real character. I I don't want to I don't want to confuse you. This is this is fiction. So the reality of the situation might be a little different. Anyway, okay, here we go, here we go. Bernie Schuster was in the egg, fertilized egg business, not the transportation business, so it's not you, okay? <laughs> so this Bernie Schuster had several hundred young pullets and 10 roosters to fertilize the eggs. He kept records, and any rooster not performing well went into the soup pot and was replaced. This took a lot of time. So he had an idea and bought some tiny bells and attached them to his rooster. This is not a tiny bell. Each bell had a different tone, so he could, he could tell from a distance which rooster was performing. Now he could sit, behind, sit on the porch and find out, fill out an efficiency report by just listening to the bells. Bernie Schuster's favorite rooster, David Schultz, not you. It's someone with have just by coincidence happened to have the same name. Okay. David Schultz was a very fine specimen. Well, you, you don't appear to be a bad specimen either. So I say you're a pretty fine specimen as well. But again, it's not you. But this morning, uh, Bernie noticed that uh, David's bell has not rung at all. When he went to investigate, he saw the other roosters were busy chasing pullets. And, of course, the bells are ringing. But the pullets hearing the roosters coming would run for cover. To Bernie's amazement, David had a, his bell in his beak. And so he, he uh, so it couldn't ring. So he'd sneak up on a pullet do his job, we'll go on to the next one. Hey, I, I, I didn't say this, I didn't say this, uh, David, this Bernie had a Yiddish cup though, did I? Okay, let, let me continue. Okay, so uh, Bernie was so proud of, of, uh, of David that he entered them in a show and, and David became an overnight sensation among the judges. The result was that judges not only awarded uh, David the Nobel Peace, oh. Peace Prize, they also awarded him the Pulitzer Prize. Oh. Pulitz, Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer Prize. Clearly, uh, David was a politician in the making, because who else but a politician could figure out how to win two of the most coveted awards on our planet? by being the best at sneaking up on unsuspecting populace and screwing them when they weren't paying attention. 
vote carefully in the next election because you can't always hear the bells. <laughs> I couldn't wait to tell that one. And I, I don't see anybody getting ready to throw tomatoes at me, so I guess it went over okay. They ran out of tomatoes. They ran out of tomatoes. There we go. Okay. We ate them all. Okay. I, I want to make sure that everybody ate the tomatoes beforehand. Okay. So let me backtrack and get to the story, and we're going to get right into some of the other things as well. 1964. I was a student at Penn State, a senior student. And in my economics class, there was another student from Egypt. And he and I became friends. And he invited me to the uh, Penn State Arab Club. I'd never heard of this group in my life before. I was active in uh, Hillel, very active in Hillel. And uh, so the very first meeting, I would, to, for me to get up in front of a group like this way back when I was 21 years old, You've got to be kidding. In my wildest dreams back then, I never thought I'd be able to get up in front of a group now and talk, but that, that's the way things worked out. Bless you. So I went to the meeting, and, I was, and uh, somebody, you know, somebody introduced me, and they said uh, that I was Jewish. And all of a sudden, everybody crowded around me and looking at me, and I was scared. I, honestly, I was scared. And uh, I said, uh, you know, that they asked, why was I there? So I said, I read from the Jewish Exponent, who lives in Philadelphia, uh, and uh, came over uh, and Philadelphia Inquirer, but I wanted to find out really what things were like instead of just reading about it. And that was an experience that literally changed my life. Because when everybody's gathering around me, remember, some of you, maybe, maybe all of you remember the the advertisement when EF Hutt talks, people stop. That's what happened. And that's why I was scared. Because all of a sudden, the spotlight was thrust upon me. So that, that took place in 1964. 1973, I had the opportunity to uh, host the, the 25th anniversary dinner for the State of Israel for B'nai B'rith. I was active with B'nai B'rith at the time. And then not too much else happened until I met this young lady. Philia Hassan. And she and I started doing our, our talks around the, uh, around, around the state, up in Pennsylvania, up in New York. And uh, my life has not been the same since then. I'm, uh, I've become very active in the environment. I'm active in several environmental groups in, here in, uh, in South Jersey. My time is, is extremely limited. I love what you're doing. I, would, uh, I may even consider uh, joining your group, but I'm not. But I'm not going to say I may be as active as some of you, simply because of uh, the other activities. I'm involved with trying to stop a liquefied natural gas plant in Gibbstown. Last year, I was a, a guest speaker at the uh, Jewish War Veterans, made a presentation there. I've been working with municipalities uh, in reference to uh, getting to pass resolutions against the liquefied natural gas plant. So far, I've got 17 of them. I'm working in conjunction with Sierra Club and Food and Water Watch. I'm volunteering for Delta River Keepers. And I've been involved with Sustainable Jersey and a whole host of other things. I'm involved with my town of Runnymede. Uh, uh, we're doing a lot of art projects in, in town, et cetera, et cetera. So my, my time is very limited. But I, yeah, I would definitely consider being part of this, uh, this, this uh, group as well. Because I, I, I love some, I love a lot of things that you're doing there. I think it's really, really good. So, um, let's talk uh, now a little bit about what happens if, I mean, the, the world we live in is, is the topsy-turvy world. I mean, it doesn't matter if you, if you uh, are one political persuasion or another political persuasion, there's a lot of division today, not only in this country, but in other countries as well, all over the world. So, what happens there, how can we find peace in ourselves when there's so much turmoil going around. Well, I have, I have something, uh, I have a little magnet that I, that I actually took off my, uh, my desk, my metal, my metal file cabinet, and it says, peace. It does not have to be in a place where there's no noise, no trouble, no hard work. 
It means that be in the midst of these things and still be calm in your heart. Being calm in your heart. That is where you can find peace within self. To have peace, first of all, start, starts with you, each and every one of you. We all have a connection with God. We have a connection with our community. We have a connection with the things that are important with us, the people that are important with us as well. But first, it starts with you. By, finding, by looking to what would, what would give you peace, so you don't have to express the anger or, or any of the other negative emotions that are around. But I want to you think about something for just a minute. Back in, in uh, uh, December 24th, 1968, for the very first time in the history of the world, we were able to see the Earth from the moon. Well, if you have that image, I'm sure you've seen it many, many times. One thing that appears in that image is light. Light shining upon the Earth. But another thing that's part of that image is the darkness. The light and the dark. The dark are the times that we're going through right now. But there can be light, and there can be light within the darkness. It all starts with you, it all starts with each and every one of you. So when you look in the mirror, you won't see your physical image. You will see who you really are. What is really important in your lives? We all have a quest to be successful in our lives, to have family, community, and all the other good things that go along with it. But ultimately, we stand, we stand in front of God, looking to see, who am I? What can I do now, this moment, to find peace? When you find peace, other things magically fall into place. The same energy that you use for your anger, for uh, uh, your judgments toward other people and other things and so on and so forth, it's the same energy. You can, you can funnel it into yourself through any negative and come out on the other side, positive. I hear, it's, I hear it may be rainy today. And how many times have you uh, been in the rain? You've all been in the rain a lot of times. And how many times have you seen a rainbow? How many times have you seen a rainbow? You see a rainbow a lot of times. Not all the times that it's there, but you see a lot of rainbows. There's always a rainbow behind every dark cloud, behind every difficulty, behind every problem. There's always a rainbow. Look for the rainbow. It's so important. It's so important. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to quote now. I don't know who the author is, but I love this quote. It may have made it to you as well. I believe in the sun when it's not shining. I believe in love when feeling it not. I believe in God even when he is silent. If this was a woman's group, I would say even when she is silent, but you're a men's group, so we'll just go with that. Anyway. There's another thing that's very, very important as well. You've all heard it many, many times. And I don't know if every, anybody, if everybody in the room can see this. It's all familiar, you're familiar, with, everybody's familiar with this, I'm sure. Treat others as you like to be treated yourself. How many times do we, fall, do we fail at that? Well, I can tell you every time I go to, to uh, Rosh Hashanah, I look for all the sins and, my God, have I committed that many again every year? And the answer is yes. I'm still, God's not, God's not finished with me yet. I mean, he's, he's done, done pretty good, but there's still a few rough edges, a few rough edges. Some people might even think I have a lot of rough edges, and that's okay, because I'm in this for me to smooth out my rough edges. I can't smooth out anybody else's. They have to smooth out their own, as each and every one of you have to do the same as well. So, the poem, My Enemy in the Mirror, represents not only global relations between countries, religions, cultures, and backgrounds, but between families and neighbors on a one-to-one -one basis. 
none of us are so perfect that we have not been each other's enemies. How many of you have enemies in your life? Those of you who don't, how the hell did you do that? I've had enemies, you've had enemies, we've all had enemies. The one thing I learned is to love my enemies because after all, I created them. I created the enemies. I created my enemies. I didn't, you didn't create my enemies. You didn't create my enemies. I created them myself. And each and every one of you, looking in the mirror, that spiritual mirror we're talking about, not the physical one, may say the same thing. That you have a golden opportunity. If you created, if you created a problem, then within the problem itself, you can solve the problem. The Chinese character for a problem is opportunity. Because within that problem is the opportunity to be able to overcome it. And each of us has it within ourselves to be able to reach deep down inside of ourselves and pull out the good things we need. Because when things go well, we find peace. But what's wrong with peace? Anybody, anybody have anything against peace? I don't see any hands go up. We all want peace. But peace very often is elusive because we get involved with everyday life, a uh, problem comes up, this happens, and so on and so forth. So uh, it, becomes, it becomes elusive, especially when we become, when we become stressed out by it. That, that, that could be a, a very, very difficult thing here. So how we look at ourselves is how we look at others and the rest of the world. If we look at others that each person is amazing. Then something happens. Because the divisions that we have, oh, that person did this or said that or, or uh, believed this or believed that, all that becomes unnecessary. Because we accept that person as, as within the spirit that's within them as being very powerful. And by doing that, this helps to give us peace. It really does work. I've been, I've, been, I've been questing for peace all my life. I finally, at this stage of my life, I, I'm now retired, I've been retired about five years now, and I'm doing the things, what I want to do, when I want to do it, nobody tells me what to do or how to do it. And I say that not out of arrogance, but as a peaceful calm emanating from deep within me. And each of us have the same thing among ourselves. You're all going to find peace a different way. I'm not going to say, because I found peace in a particular way, it's going to work for you. We all, you know, we're all like snowflakes. And you all know what a snowflakes are. No, no two are ever alike. No two of you are ever alike either. I look around the room, I see tall people, I see short people, I see people with hair, people with no hair, uh, and a whole host of things. People, with, people that are healthy, people who have medical issues, and so on and so forth. We're all different. We all. We all are responsible for the things that we created in our lives because that's what's emanating from deep within ourselves. And that is what's so important. That's what's so important. So with the, with the uh, golden rule of what we sow, we reap, we reap. You've heard it a million times. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is the golden rule in eight different religions. The golden rule in eight different religions. Let me just read a couple of them. I'm not going to go through the whole list here. You all know what it is in Judaism. But for uh, Islam, no one of you is a believer until he desires for his brother that which he desires for himself. Christianity, of course, do unto others, do as you would have to do unto you. Buddhism, hurt not others in ways that you yourself find hurtful. One should seek for others the happiness that one desires for self. And there are others as well. One of the things that I do whenever I give a talk is I give a copy of this to a particular organization. And I would like to, uh, Bernie, let me hand this to you. Thank you. And I don't know if you have a place to hang it or not, but certainly I would of course invite you to share that with everybody here, as many people as, as possible. Because we're all the same inside. We're all the same, so why is there hate? Why, why, why are there problems with the Israelis and Arabs? We're all brothers and sisters in Abraham, aren't we? 
Why do we want to fight and kill each other? That's stupid. It's dumb. It's also not peaceful. There is a group in Israel that uh, a community in Israel that the Arabs and Jews have lived together for over 40 years. They go to each other's schools. They worship in either the synagogue or mosque, depending on the holidays. And, it, and it's called Oasis of Peace. Look it up on the, on the uh, internet. Oasis of Peace. Why, if it works there, in the heart of uh, some of the major problems we have in the world, which are the Middle East, we have problems elsewhere too, but the Middle East, there are major problems. Why can't it work for the rest of us? What is wrong with us that is stopping us from being able to reach out? The young lady that I met with, Afalia Hassan, I met her family. I met her son, Ahmed, he's 20 years old now. I met her daughter, Zara, she's 22. Both are very, very good students, both in college. At, uh, one is going to Rowan, came to Rowan Gloucester County College. That, that's uh, Ahmed. And her daughter's going to Rowan University. She wants to become a doctor. They came from war. They've risen up. They're, they're immigrants, as all of us were immigrants at one time. Or if we were not, then certainly our family was. I mean, we're nations of immigrants. So why can't we get along with one another? Why, why can't we say the good in one another? Instead of looking for the bad. Oh, this one said this, this one, this one did this horrible thing, etc., etc. We're all one soul. We're all one soul. Why not start acting like it? We have the power within us ourselves to do so. But the point of it is, we each have to make our own decision whether we want to do this or not want to do this. This is our legacy. This is who we are as, uh, as Jews in the modern world. This is who we are as Jews in the ancient world. How come it worked back then and the Jewish community stayed together for over 2,000 years through, never had a, didn't have a country, kept being persecuted, uh, being put out, uh, being killed for no reason at all, just because simply they had a six-pointed star associated with, with, their, with their faith. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. We have the power, we can change the world. Now I got this crazy idea that, uh, that all the people in this room, I don't know, quite know how many are, are here in a 50, 60, 78, it really doesn't matter. But I will, I will share something with you that I believe, I believe with all my heart and soul that there is enough brain power, enough enthusiasm, and enough will in this very room that we can solve every problem of the world. We have that within it. We have that, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and you're looking at, at part of it as well. We have the power, we can, we can do this. We, we can create a different world for ourselves. But we need to branch out from simply being Jews, which, a lot of, which we do a lot of good in the community, whether Jew, Jewish people or not. But we, we have the power to be able to change the world. We can do this. I know we can do it. And I know, I, I know it's in each and every one of you because each and every one of you has experience. You've been trained in certain things. You've experienced in certain things. You have an interest in certain things. You've read about certain things. You're educated with certain things. Put it all together. We can solve the world's problems in this very room. In this very room. Think about that. Think about that. Now turning to the lighter side. And on a happy note. And, and, and with a happy note, yes. Absolutely, positively. Okay. Um, Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel Peace Prize. Um, you know, it was named after its founder, uh, Albert Prize. Well, that's the Nobel Peace Prize. Well, okay. Um, okay, the, the, this, one's a little bit, this one's a little bit serious. The Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to a group trying to ban nuclear weapons. Are you, is everybody listening? The Nobel Peace Prize 
was awarded to a group uh, that, that tried to ban nuclear weapons. That was the uh, Physicians Against Nuclear War, 1986. Ernesto Kahan, who is a professor in Israel, accepted this on behalf of the organization. I don't know how many of you have heard of the group called Physicians for Social Responsibility. They're a group active. The local chapter is in Philadelphia. I've attended a number of their meetings. And uh, they are an offshoot of this as well. But yet, America won't even ban assault weapons. That's the serious side, okay? A friend of mine, when, when I first got the nomination, he's a food writer. So, of course, you know, he's got a good sense of humor. And he said, David, you didn't, win, you didn't get nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. It's a Noel Pizza Prize. The Noel Pizza Prize. That was his, his humor. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Okay. Um, Bob Dylan, you know, won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2016 in literature. But it's actually retroactive to 1976 because nobody could figure out what he was saying until now. <laughs> Okay, what Nobel laureates said this? I fought an end to apartheid. Who said that? Uh, Mandela. Mandela, correct, good. I healed the sick and clothed the, the poor. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, thank you, good one. I campaigned for civil rights. Great, okay. I told everybody it's hot outside. <laughs> what is it? Al Gore. Al Gore. Right, right. Good one. Good one. Okay. Malala, Malala Yousafian, who, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014, the youngest recipient, okay? She asked the Nobel Peace Prize Committee if it was the same Nobel Prize they gave to Obama. And they said no, but he hadn't give, given that one back yet. Then I, then I saw... Then I saw a big sign, I don't have it, I can't uh, show it to you right now, but there was an actual sign that says, free Nobel Peace Prize with the order of shrimp tacos. Okay, now, uh, let, me just, let me just close with this. If you break the laws of man, you go to jail. If you break the laws of God, you go to hell. However, if you break the laws of physics, you go to Sweden and get your Nobel Prize. Thank you very much. Stay up here for a second. Okay. Because I'm going to make it very, very easy for you in terms of deciding whether to join our club or not. On behalf of the club, I'd like to offer you a year's membership. Oh. So wow. you're now a member. Not Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. Whether you come or not, that's up to you. Okay. I hope you do. Gosh, that's so so kind of you. And I appreciate it. Oh my God. Woo! Right. Look and at you, this. You even get a look a, at this. A, a, a semi fancy look certificate. Look at this. Oh, and we got it. We've got a camera. I'll come in. <laughs> got it. Got it. Oh, I think Bernie's got it too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very very oh, much. Thank you. Thank you very oh. much. 50-50. Well, we've got a couple of announcements, and we've got a 50-50. Ed's got something with 50-50. We, we have a technical issue this morning. Somebody bought three tickets, and somebody bought one ticket, and you didn't get your half. Any, anybody want to claim those? And please don't What's go get up at the same time. Yeah, sure. One. You bought, you bought one and don't Anybody with the three that bought three and didn't get their their strip? Okay. Now, that's right. Now we're going to ask David to pull the 50 50. And then I've got another David who'd like to say something. <laughs> oh, okay, all the tickets are in. Did everybody, did everybody put a ticket in? Yep. Are you sure? All in. Would, would you like to put another ticket in? <laughs> Can we just hand it to you? Take one out. 
Okay, we got a winner right here. All right. Yes, we do. One eight five three seven zero. That's not the right number. No. <laughs> do you have a better number? Yes. Up. Dave, come and fiddle with uh, with this. There it is. Three seven zero. I almost trust you. What's the winning amount? I almost walked away with the uh, player. I thought he was handing to me for the speech. Here. <laughs> Congratulations you to you, David. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, David Wynn. Okay, um, uh, can everybody hear me? Because I think yes. that might suck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, earlier this month, Randy sent out an email about the fact that a member uh, Garney Kaplan is uh, supporting a number of buses going to the Jewish community, the Jewish Center uh, Museum in Philadelphia. The admissions there are free. You can drive yourself and get it for free. But he's running about uh, four buses from here. He'd like to get a bus of uh, South Jersey Men's Club members. If anybody has not yet signed up and is interested in going, it's October 23, eight weeks from today. Uh, and you need to get your name, the number of people in your group, your uh, email address, and your phone number. So if you're at all interested in going, please come here and sign up. We've got a couple of books here uh, for people to complete. You you do. The buses are free. Everything is free. The bus is free. Every return buses are free. The admission is free. All you have to be is interested in seeing the uh, American Museum of Jewish History in Philadelphia. So you do not have to be an you do not have to be a member. You can be a, a friend, a guest, a neighbor. Somebody that you just bang on the head and schlep on the bus with you, it's all good. But, but Barney did ask that we fill up a bus. If he's, if he's going to dedicate one to the men's club, he did ask that we get at least 40 people to fill it up. So please sign up with Dave Wynn. Paid members, I have shirts. Huh? Paid up members that are new. Sure. There are shirts out here. Do, if we've got any paid up members, new paid up members that still need shirts, see Rob, he's got shirts up front. Uh, let's see, what else? I just want to quickly remind everybody that we do have men's club mitzvah cards that are available. Uh, just contact me, contact Len, Len Berman. We can send out mitzvah cards for any occasion. If you'd just like to purchase mitzvah cards, you can get blank ones here. And uh, an update on the website. Please, thank you for your patience. The website is developing. Developing, yes. It's, it's going in the right direction. So we... It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Do not be surprised if, yes, if you're having a little bit of technical difficulty. And Bernie. Last up, do you want to come and tell us about some car shows? Yay. While Bernie's passing, is there anybody else that has anything that they'd like to announce? Yes. Just a point of information, the Jewish Museum in Philadelphia is providing free admission for the rest of 2022. Oh. Huh. Admission. Okay. Well, there we go. And spe special thanks to Stuart Weitzman for donating the money to reopen the Jewish Museum. So that that was a, a big deal, and he should be getting a lot of credit. Go. Yeah, he should be getting more credit than just a name. That that what he did was. Uh, very important. Bernie, you're up. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Great speech, great presentation. I'm setting up a bunch of tours for museums that I belong to and help manage. The best one, or the most interesting, is City On, which is in South Philly. That's not Brooklyn. 
Uh, he runs, he passed away, unfortunately, but he left enough money so we could run the museum forever. He was a surgeon, he did a lot of good things, made a lot of money, and he collected 75 antique race cars, uh, and I stored them at my building, and then I sold them one of my Pertz buildings in South Philadelphia near the airport, near the automobile. And we have tours there every, every day except Monday. And then every other weekend, we run cars in the back of the yard. And that's exciting. And I've driven them, and these are actual cars that won the races. They won the lines. We have many dignitaries coming with Jay Leno, Jerry Seinfeld, and Bill Cosby. And the museum is fantastic. Uh, you can actually touch and feel the cars to answer questions. And they present them very well. The kids love them. The kids go free. Then there's an article about some of the cars I've had, some of the magazines I've been in. And then we have a car show September 10th, and, thank you, September 10th, running back at 180 cars participating. And it's really great. We cover the whole city. And you can touch a few of the cars, talk to the people, and you can bring cars too if you want to bring a car. Uh, and just sign up for that registration on the bottom. Oh, are these the long sleeves? I'm sorry? Really These must be the long sleeves. Uh, no, well, the only extra large that we have are no, the long sleeves. Oh, really? Yeah, but so. One in South Jersey. There's all stuff I have. One in Skip. So, like I said, I'm two words with these two museums and other museums that's involved. It's uh, a great museum. Uh, it's a great museum. This has got so much shit you can't believe it. Yeah, oh, you have to take a tram on it. It's a wise tram. The guy who owns it is one of the richest guys in the area. I can't mention his name, but this guy. He's Jewish. Yeah. And he was a developer, and he bought the mall in Morgantown, and he has 500 cars there. It's hard to believe this guy actually has more cars than Jay Leno. So, he has 500 cars, and he's a good. He's built most of everything. And he started out very poor, he was very well. So he likes to give back to his museum. You take train rides around uh, a couple's club. Did anyone come to the couple's club last time and went there? Oh, sure, let's go. Well, I'd like to get this club to go. And that's a great thing. And uh, he's got more stuff you've ever seen. And there's a book in the back there if you want to take it. Any questions or you want to sign up? I got things over here. I'm trying to get enough rooms together. Go on with this museum. Okay. A lot of that too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any good in welfare you'd like to share? Birthdays, anniversaries, children, grandchildren. Oh. This is the first the live meeting I've been to in more than two years. And there last October, I became a grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> Mouthful talk. Huh? Bernie? I came 80 years old, July 13th. Hey. 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 Don't look over I know. He look, <laughs> looks you. fabulous for 90. <laughs> huh? Thank you. I became a great great grandfather four months ago and we have one of the other. Whoa, great great? Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry, great. <laughs> I'm sorry, take one great off there. I'm not in excess of one hundred. <laughs> I was really impressed because that means still a you know great grandfather. Uh, yes, okay. But I figured you had your first when you were around ten. Okay. Yes. Okay. Everybody else, all in, all done? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Great meeting. Please feel free. Bring more guests, bring more members, and hopefully we will get, have even a bigger room next month.